Most beginners think that watching tutorials is learning. It's not. Real learning happens once you stop watching tutorials and start building. And I'll show you how to make that switch today. Let me ask you a question so you might understand my point better. Do you think Picasso became great by watching other people paint? Or do you think he became great by painting himself? Failing and just painting a ton before improving? Well, obviously it was by painting himself. He didn't become great just by watching others. Sure, he might have learned from others to learn the fundamentals, but that was not his main learning resource. His main learning resource, just like in every single other creative field in the entire world, including game development, you need to do that thing to become better at that thing. If I were going to have a basketball tournament, I wouldn't practice football all of a sudden. I would just play basketball to become better at basketball. It applies to every single thing in life and game development is no exception. To become better at game development, we need to make games. It's just as simple as that. <laughs> you don't need to overcomplicate it. Picasso, he became great by painting paintings. And to get better at something, we need to do that thing itself. So to get better at building games, we need to build games. And basically in every other field except for game development, it's so obvious. But game development education is just completely ruined. I can't say that I know exactly why, but there is something about the system rewarding like watch time, people watching other videos, and like the YouTube algorithm, it rewards creators for like keeping the viewers stuck because they like return to the channel, the YouTuber gets views, YouTube gets its share of that. And like in general, YouTube just loves people getting stuck because then they'll return to YouTube. And also for the creators, they earn ad revenue, they earn money from whatever else way they can monetize like people getting stuck. And also this is very interesting, it has been researched that tutorials, which is what we call passive learning, where you don't use your brain, you don't like solve a problem, doesn't require like a huge amount of cognition, if we're going to be honest, to watch a tutorial. So that's what we call passive learning. And passive learning, it has been researched to feel more productive than it actually is opposed to active learning which is building things or like experimenting building prototypes and building games that's active learning and in active learning it has been researched that you think you learn less yet like you think you're less productive when you do active learning than you actually are and the opposite is for passive learning so there are multiple reasons why like game dev education is completely broken and why all these youtubers and like just the system rewards people getting stuck and just promote watching tutorials. Or if that was confusing to you, watching tutorials feels like you learn more than building, but in building you actually learn more. This has been researched. So if you don't want to be emotional about learning, you actually want to be logical, like you want just to do the things that has been researched to be most effective, just like we preach inside of Smartini, then what you should do is build and not watch tutorials or guides or ask AI, all these other passive things. What we should do is to build. So it's very good that you watch this video. Now your eyes are open for like real learning, how real learning works in game development. And now you're immune to this like bad education. And you now know that you need to build, but you don't just have to build. There is one specific thing that you need to keep in mind when you are building for learning game development. And that's that we need to restrict our information. So you can imagine information, it's widely available today, especially with AI. You can ask AI to make basically every system that you would ever need and the AI would do that for you. Like I'm not saying it would make your entire game, but if you asked it to make like one movement system, then it would make an awesome movement system. So information widely available. You can get answer to everything you want. But that's both a good and a bad thing. And it's a bad thing because you can get so much input in your brain and that might sound good, but your brain is not made to handle all of that input and all of that information. And we can't just remember all of that information and then use it practically. That's not how our brain works. We can't just read something or ask AI to do something. Then we can like take a photo of it and then just remember it and know how to use it practically. That's not how learning works. So what we need to do is restrict our information. What we need to do is learn one thing at a time. We aren't going to learn how to make a movement system. We're going to learn how to move a player, how to get input, how to 
like add physics we're going to do all these things separately we're not going to learn like one system we're going to learn one thing at a time so instead of spending like 10 minutes trying to learn how to make an atomic moment system which is my example here we're going to spend 15 minutes learning how to get the player input and that might sound like stupid and counterproductive and bad time management but i promise you when you are stuck in this so-called tutorial hell you could spend literally days trying to learn one thing but since you aren't going into depth about one specific thing and learning one specific thing at a time you aren't going to remember any of these things and you aren't going to be able to use any of the things that you're watching tutorials about practically in your own games so that's why i preach this to learn one specific thing at a time because it's going to stick to your brain so much more when you actually focus on one specific thing at a time and really learn that one thing opposed to trying to learn 100 things at the same time because your brain won't remember that and your brain won't be able to use those 100 things practically at all okay so now you understand that we need to build and you need to restrict your information but how does this look practically like how do we use this like step by step so since you are a beginner you probably know like a few things not a ton of things but you could probably do like a few things in your game engine and you would be like fairly comfortable with it and you only need to know one thing to follow this like <laughs> literally one thing so i want you to pick one thing that you are comfortable with inside a game engine it can be getting player input it can be making a button color change when you click it like whatever simple thing it might be i want you to pick one then i want you to do that thing inside of your game engine so you know it's sweet okay first since you've done it now and you used it practically and you didn't watch it at all to do it it's going to sit tighter in your brain but that's not my point that's just a bonus <laughs> the point is that you're going to do this one specific thing that you chose let's say it was get player input you're going to expand on that in the most natural way possible so for example if you know how to get player input so basically just one line but whatever we need to start somewhere you know how to get player input like the next natural step <laughs> after you get player input is obviously to do something like whatever <laughs> the next thing you can do is try to like move the player that might sound a bit li a little advanced but uh, move the player print the log do like the next natural thing from your one thing that you like chose so let's stick to that example of getting player input let's say that was your one mechanic that you know how to do before that you knew how to do before and now you want to move the player so that can also be basically one line if you like do it in a messy way that can be one line so what you're going to do is just try to do it for 50 minutes with no google no tutorials no ai like no information whatsoever just try to do it fail obviously you will fail because you can just guess your way to doing it but like there might be a chance that you can but and that's awesome but that's not like the goal don't expect to do it I just wanted to struggle with it for 15 minutes try to like use the um, intelligence or the ide like the suggestions from your ide try to like find the solutions just based on that and you might get very close so you might think like well obviously to change the position like to move the player i need to change the position so you might think well to move the player i need to change the position and the position is on the transform component at least in unity so what if I just type transform and then you see on the um, IDE it says when you type a dot it says transform dot and then position comes up so you think well transform dot position that makes sense and then you just experiment around that and then inside the IDE it's going to say well this is the position of the game object so you think wow that's awesome now I know how to get the position and then you can kind of get close to the result that you want but maybe you won't get there exactly but at least you learned a ton of things with just experimenting and just at least trying because as you might have learned in school or from your mom or whatever you learn from your mistakes and failures this is going to be a failure that's the point <laughs> after those 15 minutes of trying i want you to use google no ai uh, preferably no tutorials i want you to use google and preferably if you find an uh, relevant documentation for example unity documentation or godot documentation that's the best thing because that's like it gives you the answer but it's kind of hard to implement in your own game because as i said we want to do things like in the hard way to actually learn and make it stick to our brain 
So if you can find official documentation, that's the best. But you can also use Stack Overflow, Quora, Reddit, whatever it might be. Just use Google, don't use AI, don't use these easy things that just give you the answer and explains like perfectly and <laughs> beautifully. That's not what we want. We want it to make we want it to be hard so that we can actually like think for ourselves and make it stick to our own brain. Then just repeat this process of making small experiments, doing like the next next natural thing, and you're going to learn like very, very many small things, and you're also going to learn how to use them practically. You're not just learning the theory about them, you're actually learning how to use them practically, like in a real world scenario. And in the end, you're going to have like a small thing that you can play, preferably. And you might need to restart because um, you didn't design it to be like a playable experience. So you might want to restart new project when it gets messy, whatever, doesn't matter. Just experiment, do things, like just get things to work and and that's all you need to know. And also these things are just some of the fundamentals that I teach inside of Smart Indie. So if you want to continue this process and have access to five other modules that builds onto this. So how to get your first prototype, how to prepare for your first game, how to actually finish your first game in only 60 days. If you want to have access to all of that information, lay that beautifully step by step for you then you can click the first link in the description and join Smart Indie today. So I'll see you there and thank you for watching.